Okay, so I'm gonna now we're gonna plant some hardwood trees, um, and I've I've marked the stake here where I want it to go, and so we're gonna do a little bit of scalping here to remove the vegetation first, and uh, so that all these weeds are not competing with the young tree for water and nutrients. Here we got a little blackberry. So we're going to try and pull that up by the root. Another, another blackberry there. And because every little piece of root of blackberry is going to want to re-sprout. Now, I should explain here that this is a, a newly cleared forested area. So uh, this was an alder forest here. Uh, the remaining alder trees are right there. The trees that were right in here were the same size and maturity of those about 60 years old. And as a consequence, this ground has never been farmed. So it is truly beautiful, rich, dark earth, lots of organic matter. Alder trees are nitrogen fixers. They take nitrogen out of the air and put it into the soil through a symbiotic relationship with a bacteria that lives on their roots. So all their leaves are like nitrogen pellets. So they've really enriched this soil over 60 years. And this soil has never been farmed. When I came here 42 years ago, it was a young alder forest. Prior to that, it had probably been burned off in a forest fire around uh, 100, 120 years ago. That's the name of our farm, Burnt Ridge. Anyway, so uh, since this is such a beautiful soil, it's very well suited to chestnuts. There's some chestnut trees right up there that are about 25 years old and they're probably 45, 50 feet tall already. So I know the chestnuts do very well here on this naturally acidic soil. And uh, so uh, I don't have to be too concerned in this case about soil amendments, uh, fertilizing uh, or acidifying the soil or adding organic matter because there's good organic matter in this topsoil later. And uh, now I'm getting into the subsoil a little bit. I'm going to put that aside a little on this side and we'll put that back in first so we have a maintain a soil profile like it was originally. Uh, you know, the uh, if you have a soil that's poorer quality than this, uh, then it can be helpful to big to dig a really big hole or a deep hole if the drainage is is impeded by by uh, a uh, hard pan, then it might be necessary to break it up with a pick uh, uh, if it's if it's so compacted that soil uh, roots won't be able to penetrate the soil at that point. Uh, but bear in mind that most tree roots are within the top 18 inches of soil. Uh, and uh, so in this case, I'm going to plant a chestnut tree. Now I've had it soaking in water and I put it in this bag here so it wouldn't dry out since the sun is shining. So we've got a very nice root system here, starting to put on a little new growth already. Uh, I'm going to have to go a little wider with my hole and a little bit deeper also. And so we'll set that aside here for a minute and widen it up some more. So, uh, as for soil amendments, since I know this soil and I know it grows chestnuts well, I don't, and I don't have to be too concerned about soil amendments in this instance. If I were planting in a, in a pasture of grass rather than this forest loam soil, then I would be, you know, more concerned maybe about some soil amendments. If this were eastern Washington, for example, where the soils tend to be alkaline, then I would need to acidify the soil 
for chestnuts to be happy. But our soil here is naturally acidic, and so it's kind of ideal for chestnuts. They like a, a pH that's 6.5 or, or lower, and uh, since we're at about 5.5, they're very happy here. Uh, but if it were alkaline, then I would have to add something like sulfur uh, or peat moss or both to the soil to make it acidic. And, uh, uh, and if the soil was a grassy pasture, then there may not be the, the beneficial mycorrhizae, uh, the fungus that, are, uh, that often grow in association with hardwood trees. Uh, that really helps them to grow considerably. And so here with uh, the alders and the hazelnuts uh, that are naturally abundant here, we have, we have excellent uh, mycorrhizal populations because we're organic growers, so we've never herbicided the ground here. Uh, and, uh, and so these, these fungi naturally exist in the soil in association with the tree roots that, that were native here. And so it really helps the trees to take up nutrients and they'll grow faster as a result of the presence of the mycorrhizae. Now, if I was planting in a grassy area where there, where it had been pasture for many years, there might not be much mycorrhizae present in this soil, in which case you can add mycorrhizae. Uh, you can buy uh, uh, mycorrhizae and just sprinkle some in. Or if you have access to a forest like this, you can just get a few handfuls of rotted organic matter from underneath the li leaf litter in the forest and add that to the planting hole. And then you'll be adding uh, the mycorrhizae that are local to your area and, uh, and in all likelihood, it'll, it'll have a symbiotic relationship with the trees. So uh, that's something to consider. Uh, so, but uh, if, you're, if you're having to add something like sulfur to, to lower the pH if your soil is alkaline, that's ideally done like a year ahead of time, but you can still do it afterwards on the surface and let the rain leach it in and uh, mix it in with the native soil. Uh, if you're adding mycorrhizae, mix that in with your native soil. If your soil is deficient in micronutrients, you can mix that in. If it's low in, in uh, uh, phosphorus, you can mix that in as you're planting. But do not add nitrogen fertilizer to the planting holes because that can actually inhibit the growth of roots. So. Let's see how our hole is doing now. Uh, we've got a little bigger hole now, yeah. And uh, that's looking about right now. We can just put the soil back in in the order in which it was taken out to create the hole. And uh, yeah, if you'd use nitrogen fertilizer that in the hole, that can, that can be detrimental. So uh, I would save that for later in the spring or even the following year. This first year, the tree just needs to get established, uh, get, get its root system going. And so we wanna, as we're refilling here, we wanna remove any air pockets. And, uh, and, and if you use something like peat moss, if your soil is alkaline or not acidic enough, uh, mix it thoroughly with your native soil. Any soil amendments, if you use sand or whatever, mix it thoroughly with your native soil. If you have a heavy, a heavy soil and the tree that you want to grow there doesn't tolerate heavy soils, don't just dig a big hole and, uh, and fill it with sand and expect the tree to be happy because when the ground is saturated after heavy rains, uh, the roots are going to be saturated in that sandy soil. So um, better to, uh, if, the so if the tree that you're planting doesn't tolerate uh, the heavy soil, it might be better to actually plant the tree 
to create a slight mound to plant the tree on uh, if, uh, if the tree that you're planting doesn't tolerate heavy soil, then, then just raise it above the soil line a bit by creating a mound. Uh, is one option. And uh, so after we tuck all the soil back in here, I want to remove any, any lingering roots here, then, uh, then we can give it a good drink. And uh, now uh, we've, uh, we do prefer to plant trees before they break dormancy. And uh, in this case, the tree's already started to leaf out, but that's okay because we're gonna water it. And we're also gonna mulch it to keep it from getting too drought stressed. But we're planting it at the same depth that it was at in the nursery and uh, not any deeper. And, uh, and before I water it, I'm gonna take another look at it. Now we had a good root system on this tree, but uh, uh, we do have a bad crotch angle right here on this branch. This is a weak point. See the angles on these branches here? This is a much stronger angle for supporting the weight of a heavy crop. When you have a crotch angle like this, this is kind of a weak point here, and it could tear out right there. So, and besides, I don't want such low branches anyway. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove this branch right here, remove this one also, and this will make less stress for the tree, uh, not having to support quite so many leaves, seeing as how we're planting this kind of late. Now, it's mid-May, and uh, you know, ideally this tree would have been planted uh, a couple months ago when it was still completely dormant, but we are too busy at the time. <laughs> the site wasn't ready, whatever. I've got lots of excuses, but uh, anyway, I can also head back some of these branches a bit and actually we'll probably wind up removing these two branches. Uh, but for right now, we can just head them back to a couple of outward growing buds like that. And uh, just to make it a little less stressful for the tree to support too many leaves. Now, um, what I'm going to do now is uh, we're going to give it a going to give it a drink. Get this tree over here. And then we are going to mulch. We're going to mulch it. So Put some cardboard here. And let's see, find the seam on the cardboard. Right a nice big piece of cardboard here now. And so we're gonna, we're gonna create a, a mulch with this cardboard and wood chips. And this way, there won't be any weeds that can take over. And so I'm going to cut this to the center. And then we'll, we'll cut a little extra hole around so that uh, we can keep an eye on the trunk. Make sure that no mice are going to take up residence underneath the tree. So now, now we can see the see the trunk, and uh, and then uh, then what we're going to do is uh, add some wood chips. So. We just, when we took out this alder forest, we just chipped some of the smaller branches up and uh, into a mulch. And now we will take this material. Run it around. But we want to make sure that we can keep an eye on that trunk. Okay. 
Now, with this, this thick of a mulch, we don't have to worry about any uh, thistles and blackberries and such shooting up. Uh, that cardboard creates a physical barrier to keep aggressive weeds from pushing up. And uh, as this organic matter breaks down in the next year or so, it will help feed the tree. And, uh, but in the meantime, uh, I think the tree has, has everything it needs to have a, a good, healthy life.